Hi, friends. Welcome to the Women in Web3 interview series. I'm your host, Alex, and I'm the community manager for Charmverse. Charmverse is a Web3 operations platform handling docs, tasks, bounties, and proposals. It's a place for team contributors to coordinate day-to-day work, sign in with crypto wallets, and unlock workspaces with tokens and NFTs. It brings together onboarding, bounty management, proposals, project trackers, and data repositories all in one place. I use Charmverse for my daily workflow, and you should too. So listeners, we're doing something new this week. We have a PO app available for you today, and I'll be dropping the secret phrase a few times throughout the interview today, so make sure you have the PO app mobile app so you can mint when you hear the phrase, and I'll be dropping that a little later on. Um, Charmverse is the sponsor of our Women in Web3 series, and the point of this series is to feature and promote badass women that are making waves in Web3. So that being said, today we have Elsie Cole, a blockchain and Web3 attorney. Hi, Elsie. Hi, hi there. Can you hear me? How are you? Good. I'm great. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for taking the time to chat. Happy to be here. Love what Charmverse is doing. Love what you're doing. Happy that we connected in New York. Yes, it was such a pleasure meeting you at the um, Charmverse Poker Night at NFT NYC. Yes. And turns out you're not just a badass in Web3, but also at the poker table. (laughs) I have my my moments at the poker table. (laughs) I did not have a good moment that night. I did not play very well. (laughs) Um, Well, I'm really glad that we were able to reconnect through this series. So thanks again. Um, and yeah. also before we get started, do I see that you're leading the nomadic lifestyle this summer? I am. So this call is taking place from Scotland at the moment. Oh, I'm in Edinburgh. That's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And you were in Spain recently, right? Yeah. I'll be heading back to Madrid Tuesday and I'll be there until, um, I have to be back in Florida to speak at a conference on the 20th. So hopefully I'll be back in Florida by All then. All right. And is that, is that the end of the summer travels? Kind of, yeah. But then it takes off again because, you know, as the Web3 space is, it doesn't quit. So there'll be a lot of conferences to attend this fall. So September will kick off with NFT Nashville and it'll just kind of go from there. Nice. Any chance you're going to Bogota? I'm I'm really trying to make that work. I'm not going to lie. Charmers team will be there. I have to be in Chicago for a wedding at some point in October. So I'm hoping that the dates work out that I can be in Bogota. Cause I, I was in Medellin earlier this year. Uh, like, or, I mean this year, I mean a couple, couple weeks ago, I feel like, and I loved Colombia. I would love nice. to go back. Yeah. Charmverse team is going to Bogota. So if you do go, let love me know it. when we should connect. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm putting it out there. It's yes. going to work out. I'll see Perfect. you in Bogota. Perfect. <laughs> um, so let's talk about your role in Web3. So you're a blockchain and Web3 attorney, which from what yes. I can tell is in very high demand. Um, yes. And I feel, like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like the need for a Web3 attorney is mentioned in so many conversations I have these days. Yeah, because honestly, navigating this space is really complicated. So um my journey into Web3, though, wasn't through law. It was more through Web3 curiosity. I think um, most paths into Web3 start um, by the inspiration of just curiosity alone, mm-hmm. right? So I um, got into the stock market, and then I got into the crypto market, and then that led me down the Web3 rabbit hole and into Miami, really, because there were so many meetups where founders were talking about their companies and what they were doing. And it was just such an easy entry point. So I started helping out on projects. And then from there, I started uh, getting more and more involved and eventually had to switch from environmental law into crypto law full time because it became clear that was my passion. Yeah. So you had you hadn't initially planned to do that, but then through studies ended up going the web three route. Yeah, I initially, I have a a concentration in um, environmental and natural resources law. So my focus was 100% not in Web3, but it it got there eventually. Yeah, quite the shift. (laughs) Yeah, happy happy to have done it. Um, So I'm going to do a quick POAP shout out because this is the first time we've done this um, for your portion of this series. So 
We are giving out a secret phrase to our listeners so they can mint a unique Elsie Cole Charmverse Poe app. For, <laughs> That's yes, amazing. To get one. Um, for tuning in. Yeah, this, this is awesome. Yeah, so make sure. I love awesome. Poe apps. Yes, so you'll do it. You ha- you'll have to do this. So you need to make sure you have a Poe app mobile app. And then go in there, yes. hit the mint button, and enter the phrase Miami what? Heat. So it's all lowercase, <laughs> one word. And Amazing. This is in honor of LC being based in Miami, usually, not this summer, yes. but usually. Love it. So Miami <laughs> Heat, and I'll be dropping that a little bit later again. So for the listeners currently, go get that Poe out. Um, Love it. (laughs) So the firm you work with provides legal services for innovators in the technology sector. So in an industry that's ever changing, how do you keep up with the current regulations to offer clients comprehensive legal support? So it's lucky that we have so many great attorneys at our firm. Everyone kind of comes at it with a different specialty and a different focus. Uh, We have a lot of people that came from the regulatory sector. We have a lot of attorneys that are kind of established as startup helpers because I like to think of these projects like you, you know, everyone in this space is like, oh, I've got this NFT project or I've got this crypto project. What you have is a startup. And I think the more we can think of it like a startup, the better off you'll be in terms of the heavy lifting you need to do and the considerations you need to have when you're starting, when you're launching, how you're operating, how you're navigating these different fields, because it just gets a little bit sticky quickly if you enter it like, oh, I'm just doing this thing and I'm, I'm very casual about it. No, what you're doing is starting a company, essentially, and you need to take it seriously. So it helps that our, our law firm has a lot of attorneys that are definitely very diverse and we do so much research. Half my job is just reading the newest updates from the SEC, the newest updates from FINRA, um, FinCEN, and corporate guidance, some tax law stuff. We do so much reading. That's like the, probably the best thing I can say is the way we stay on top of things. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah, it's ever-changing so quickly. And having to guide people in this world. You know, I'm just trying to keep up with it on this end, but I can't imagine having to give people guidance and legal support. So yeah, (laughs) it's crazy, but it's also so exciting. Like I love the updates, the cases that are starting to come out, just only legitimize the space because even if it's, you know, not the best result, it's a result because they're paying attention and that's really what matters here. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned a lot of research. What what does your day to day look like as a blockchain web three attorney? So I do I do a mixture of like client meetings, um, so much writing, and um, a lot of reading. And then the days are just kind of mixed in between. I try and spice things up so it's not back to back to back meetings or back to back to back writing. Um, I like to pepper in a, a little bit of everything because I'm a little more social. But there's other people at our firm that just like. They're so uh, intensively into the regulatory stuff that it's like nonstop for them. They're just writing all day long or reading all day long. It gets so intense. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, What are some favorite parts of your job or areas that you prefer to focus on or tackle most? Oh, wait, can you hear me still? (laughs) Yes, yes, I can. (laughs) Good. Um, Yeah, So yeah, what are some favorite parts? My favorite parts are definitely the client interactions. I get to hear about the coolest projects and I get to help these people navigate these really cool projects. So, you know, I feel like I'm I'm not necessarily an innovator, but I get to support innovators. And that's such an exciting um, thing for me because I don't feel that creative. But when I get around a bunch of creative and innovative people, it it helps me feel like I'm part of something. Yeah. You're contributing to it. You're helping them attain their goal, which is great. Yeah. Um, What are some of the most challenging parts of your job? Oh, I would say definitely navigating some of the more intense, um, regulations with clients that don't appreciate the, um, the lift that they need to do to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish in a legal way. It gets really difficult when you have a client that's like, well, I see these guys doing this and I'm just going to do it that way too. And it's like, you can see people doing stuff, but if you don't understand what's going on in the back end, all the, all the assessments, all the writings, everything that kind of went through that process, 
it's like really hard to convey to these clients the amount of work that needs to be done, navigation of different regulation that needs to be accomplished to try and do things correctly. Because what you don't want is is to get in trouble, right? You don't want to just plow ahead um, kind of recklessly and do whatever it is you want to do without really considering at least the, a baseline amount of, of regulations you need to comply with because there's serious consequences. Like when you start a company, you know, you're an officer of that company and that, that comes with duties and liabilities and you have to be ready for that. Yeah. It sounds very intimidating. Um, yeah, very intimidating. Can you still hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Um, so you are a very busy person. I was, as I was digging into stuff, I, uh, could not, I don't know where you find the time, but let's talk about some of the work you do outside of your day job and then we'll come back to some law stuff. But you're a member of a Miami based women's group called web three equity. Yes, and I am. And you volunteer on a couple of boards within your community. Um, I do, yes. So, yeah. So let's start with Web3 Equity, um, which is an organization comprised of female community leaders who are pursuing gender equity in Web3. So how are you tackling this very large and important issue? So I'm partnered with, uh, well, not partnered, but I'm part of the founding team for Web3 Equity, um, and Michelle Abs is really leading the way in that. I, in that respect, Michelle does so much. She's just kind of a, a nonstop energizer bunny machine, accomplishing so much, reaching out to the community so much. She seems like she's everywhere. Um, so I just leave really my role in that is to provide legal support to her in what she's trying to accomplish. And that's a delight because, I mean, I love that mission. I love the women that she's brought together. Um, I love the male allies she's brought into the space because women can't solve this problem alone. It really requires active participation from male allies. And she really understands and appreciates that and takes that mission to heart. So it's been such a delight to learn from her as she navigates like the tech side of the space and her network and the people that she's able to bring together. And really, I just get to do the easy lift of like the legal in that respect, because she's really building something special. Love that you call that the easy, the easy lift, the legal. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And they're very much focused around like education and empowerment and engagement, right? Absolutely. We do like in-person dine and learn opportunities for the women in this space to get together, ask questions, learn on the spot. I mean, people bring their laptops to these events and walk away with real um, strong understandings of how to mine or how to deal with a cold storage wallet, how to how to do real world things in Web3. Oh, so cool. I'm so yeah. encouraged by the women I get to interview each week because they're all just doing such amazing work in this space to narrow the gender gap and create opportunities for women. Um, and underrepresented communities in general in Web3. So thank yeah, you so much for doing that. I mean, part. we it's, don't want it to look like Web2, right? This is a chance. This new um, disruptive technology gives us a chance to look at the technology differently, to innovate differently, and to be inclusive differently. And I think that people are appreciating that more now. And it's really helping with um, some of the stuff in the space. I mean, we have a long way to go, but at least we're being thoughtful about it as we move. Absolutely. Um, so you're also a board member for the City of West Palm Beach Nuisance Abatement Board, as, yes. as well as a legacy board member for the Be More Like Claire Foundation. Um, and that uh, Be More Like Claire Foundation is amazing based on what I read about it. Um, yeah, it's really actually near and dear to me. So um came about by, um, well, I, out of really I, I'm not gonna lie so Claire was um, a dear friend of mine and she was uh, a lieutenant doctor in the the Navy really promising career that was starting and um, she was tragically murdered by her ex-boyfriend on her way into work one morning and so out of that violence 
and tragedy. Uh, we, her community, uh, she was a college roommate of mine, so a bunch of us roommates who had had the opportunity to live with her in college and get to know her throughout her short but brilliant life. Um, we all kind of banded together and joined and created this, her mom created this foundation and we supported it. So we all agreed to serve on the board and help um, continue Claire's message because she was probably one of the most philanthropic people I, I've ever met. And so all of us together can kind of be as philanthropic as she was because she was kind of a nonstop Phil- philanthropic guru, really. <laughs> she gave oh. back to her community so much. I am so sorry for your loss, and that is tragic. Um, yeah, but it's really you. beautiful that all of you came together to create this amazing foundation. Yeah, and and really, think she did because she believed in you know a sustainable earth that all relationships should be cu- cruelty free, and that people deserve access to healthy and healthy food. Like she, she just served her community so much. And so it's a, it's a treasure for me to be able to honor her memory by can, doing what I can to give back. Yeah. Well, and along with the healthy food there, you're trying to give people affordable and safe housing as well. Yes. Yeah, right? so we had a Habitat for Humanity project and we, this last year, were able to get a family moved into that home. Oh, that must have been an amazing experience. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. I mean, I didn't do the build because it was in Kansas, but um, it, it's it's been a treasure to watch. It, it's been great. Oh, um, yeah, and you're providing role models and mentors for these people as well, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a whole um, training program. There's partnerships, and then we're trying to do these um, courses where you teach people how to have like healthy relationship ideals. Amazing for young people, but really anyway, that's amazing. So how can people get involved in these groups or foundations if they're interested? And do you have to be in the Miami area? I'm assuming. No. So be Mark like Claire is actually um, out of Kansas. So I serve on this board kind of remotely. Um, We do a lot of trivia nights, you do, we do some like online uh, gala fundraising things. We do some in-person stuff with the Habitat community in Kansas. So there's a lot of ways to get involved. You can go to the Be More Like Claire found, Be More Like Claire.org and it'll take you to the foundation where you can see how to get involved and see, read about Claire and her amazing life that she had um, and all the work she did that we try and carry on. Oh. Listeners, please go check those things out. They're they're really great to read about um, and to become a part of. So please go show your support. I'm going to do another POAP shout out. So the secret phrase to go mint your POAP is Miami Heat. One word, all lowercase. And this will allow you to mint a unique Elsie Cole Charmverse POAP. Um, you just go to your mobile app, click the mint button, and enter the phrase. So do that. Don't miss out. Um, okay. So back to some web three talk, what are some challenges you see for women in web three? I think the biggest challenge now is when we do women in web three days where it's like a conference just for women. I think women forget that they need to go to the bigger conference. That's just like a standard conference. They get so hyped doing these like women only conferences that, they lose sight of that's that's to help build you into this space because the space should just be normal. There shouldn't be like a just women or just men space. Those women conference days or those women programmings is really to get you to be comfortable in the neutral space. And so women I'm seeing go to these and attend these and engage, but then they forget to go to like, you know, the bigger conferences like Bitcoin 2022 or or just like a standard, you know, NFT week in your city. Go when it doesn't, it just because it doesn't say women doesn't mean you shouldn't go like go to the big ones, get engaged, get involved. Don't be scared. Like the whole point is to dive in head first into web three. It's, it's an interactive, engaging space. And I think women only feel like the, the women's only space is like their, their entry point and they stop there. And I just think we need to keep pushing, go, go be everywhere. I like that. Yeah. You know, as someone that has been relatively new to Web 3, I was definitely intimidated initially and not sure what to expect. Um, And 
My NFT NYC experience, I did focus on a lot of women focused events. However, all of the other events I went to, people were very welcoming and yeah. to me. It wasn't, it, it was so much, yeah, it was so much more inclusive than I initially expected it to be. Yeah. It's like uh, Web3 is about community first. This is this is the ideation we're building in Web3. It's like user owned this, community built this, play to earn, um, you know, learn to earn. This is this is user driven. So of course this community is gonna be welcoming because the whole ethos behind Web3 is involvement, is engagement, is um, power to the people. So those people have to be there, women included, in the bigger space. Absolutely. And you touched it on er- on it earlier, but having the support of you know, strong, uh, men in this world too. Yes. Which, Male allies are everything really for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so let's not forget about them you yes. know, because <laughs> it really is important. And, uh, I appreciate those male allies in in any aspect of my life. Really. Yeah. Yeah. A good male ally can't be, can't be understated because, you know, it's not, we can, we can, promote women's rights all we want, but we need, we need men on board to understand why there's a value in women's rights. Right. Like that's half of the population. We need them to understand this too. (laughs) Yeah. Let's unite. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And and that's a great point. You know, it is, it's all about community and it's networking and, and sharing those contacts just to build that community and make it that much stronger and share the knowledge. Definitely. Um, So what are some, What's some advice that you would give to someone considering becoming an attorney in the Web3 space? So I would say, you know, any attorney that's considering going to law school, I think you're, you know, the first thing you need to do is understand why you're going to law school. And once you get your why down, it'll make those three years of hell kind of more palatable <laughs> because you've got your why and it's a, a really strong reason. Because if you don't really know why you're there, it's so easy to flounder. So anyone considering law school, you really need to know why, because it's a quite a large undertaking and it's transformative in ways that you aren't ready for if you don't know how to dig deep and, and always revert back to like your motivation. Um, to get into Web3, I would say, you know, there's so many entry points into Web3. So if you want to go into Web3 law, get into law school and just join your tech group, join your, you know your securities group, like web three is, is a lot of tech. It's a lot of innovation. It can be IP. So you can go the trademark copyright, um, intellectual property route. You can go securities route where you're dealing with a lot of those three letter agencies that all of us love to hate. You can go a more generalized corporate route where you're helping with corporate structuring, fundraising, onshore, offshore entities. There's so many paths in, I think it's easiest to find your path. I think in Web3 as a whole, there's so many um, silos of disruption that you need to find your entry point. Um, I say this at a lot of conferences I talk out. I talk to um, on, it's the best to find your entry point in any space that's this innovative and this vast because, you know, this, is, this isn't just one technology. Blockchain is changing all industries. Blockchain is is the Bitcoin that changes fiat and that's innovative in how we look at money. Blockchain is Ethereum and how it disrupts um, software. Blockchain is smart contracts and how it it simplifies duplicative business processes. Blockchain is DAOs and how it's taking on what looks like a community and whether communities and corporations need to change and evolve into this new decentralized mechanism. So there's so many entries in like there's, you know, NFTs, which are disrupting how we can, um, how we digest content and media. So it's best to find your entry point in these silos of disruption. And the same goes for, if you're looking at a legal path, you know, it's not just like, Oh, you've got to do everything. You can find your IP path into web three, because now you're dealing with NFTs and art an artist and what they're doing with it and how they'd like to own that, that asset or that, or, um, you know, release that license to that user. Or you're looking at, um, 
you know, the security side, because maybe you're more tech, like uh, regulatory oriented and you want to really focus on how the law is changing and influence it that way. So I think finding your entry point is the best approach in and you find that by curiosity and you just follow your curiosity forward. And hopefully that leads to a serious passion and what you're looking at. Yeah. Do you, do you work with uh, DAOs, people setting up DAOs much? Yeah. DAOs are yeah. such a hot topic because people think they need a DAO and you have to talk them through why they need a DAO, what they're wanting to do with the DAO, how to structure a DAO, whether it's onshore, offshore, what makes sense. Um, there might be a foundation. There might be... There's so many things to consider and DAOs became like a hot button item for a quick second in 2022, but then the the bear market kind of fleshed out some of that chaos that I think we would have seen if we were still in a, a bull market. I think DAOs would have really taken off again for some reason. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm just, I'm, um, yeah, I'm curious about your thoughts on DAOs. And, uh, DAOs so are do. tricky. They're just tricky because people think they need them, but DAOs are only really effective in terms of what you're looking for in a decentralized community. So if you want to have a lot of decision-making, which most people do when they're starting something and it's their idea and they're enthusiastic about it, they're like, oh, I need to do this as a DAO. And I'm like, why? You're, you're going to give all of that power away. And if they don't give the power away and make it truly decentralized, then what their, what their token equivalent um, is equivalent to is maybe a security because if you don't handle it right on one end with your decentralization and, and now you might have a security and that's a whole other regulation that you have to consider. So the, the fine points of DAOs, what you're doing, how you're operating DAOs, if you go down one path, you've got these considerations. If you go down another path, you've got these considerations and you really have to know why you need a DAO instead of like maybe a different mechanism on the blockchain. So if you're starting a doubt, go talk to Elsie. <laughs> yeah. You need, yeah, you need, uh, you need an attorney to navigate. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> um, how about a woman in web three that you look up to most? And I ask some of these final questions selfishly because <laughs> I want to educate myself and I like knowing who other people are looking at and what projects people are looking at. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's people that are creating such cool things. Like one of my, you know, dear friends in Web3, yeah. Jessica Hunt, created Fathom Yacht Club and just been navigating that NFT project. I, I love her boldness in the space, her understanding of the tech. I love what she does in general. So I definitely look up to her. Um, Michelle Abs with what she's doing in Miami with Web3 Equity, the way she can just kind of navigate so much in this space all at the same time is quite impressive. On the regulatory side, I think Perry Ann Boring is just like outstanding with her ability to synthesize and um, express the changes that are coming and navigate the regulatory aspect of things because she's with, I believe, the Blockchain Association in D.C. And I love hearing her talk. I definitely look up to her. Awesome. Yeah, I love asking these questions because it just opens up a, a whole nother rabbit hole to go down and research yeah. and check out projects. Um, you mentioned the Fathom Yacht Club, so I'm assuming you'll you'll say this for one of your next answers, but three crypto projects are NFT collection. Keeping an eye on. <laughs> so <laughs> the attorney and me will not be answering this question directly. Oh. <laughs> I would never okay, want to... Understood. I would never want to... <laughs> you know, have undue influence on a project given I navigate the security side of the space. But I will say anytime you're looking at an NFT collection or if you're new to NFTs, you need to understand your why. Are you NFT NFTs because you like art? Are you NF NFTs to flip and make a quick dollar, hopefully? Are you in NFTs because you want membership and utility? And if you can answer that question, I think it makes it a lot easier to navigate the NFT space because if you like art, then follow what projects you think are cool and inspire you and, and buy what you think is beautiful. My, as you can see, my profile picture is a, um, sorry, there's a, <laughs> um, as you can see, my profile picture is an NFT and I mm -hmm. bought, uh, I bought that women and weapon because I actually wear a dagger necklace every day and I usually rock a red lip and I'm blonde with brown eyes. So I just felt like it super represented me. Um, 
but I'm not a, I'm not a flipper. I can't keep up with any of that. So for me, I just like to buy projects I either really like because they represent me or they have utility that I want access to. So that is my, my approach. I have a lot of friends that just, they know what's about to be hot. They get in on it and you know, it's a good investment. They're holding it or they flip it quickly. So you can do anything you want with NFTs in this space. You just have to know what you're doing and why and be very savvy about it. I love, it sounds like why is the biggest question that we should all be asking. Ourselves? Yeah. I think everyone should constantly be asking why, yes. <laughs> what's your motivation? <laughs> I like that because I think people jump into something and they get overwhelmed or whatever, but they haven't asked themselves why they're doing it or yeah. What the end game is. Exactly. And always knowing that is a huge key for like, at least in my life, if I can explain my why, then it allows me to make a lot tougher decisions later on. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, use, I'm stealing that. Um, <laughs> and I'm telling you, talking to these, to these great women every week, I'm learning a lot and um, getting some great pointers for my day to day. So thank you. Love it. How yeah. about, I don't think this is a touchy subject. Three mobile apps <laughs> that help you stay organized on, and on top of your game. Yes, that one I can definitely answer. Right. So Google <laughs> Calendar is like <laughs> life changing. Gmail, like you're having your email on your phone and having your calendar on your phone that reminds you and puts your phone on do not disturb when you jump on this stuff is crucial to everything. And then I would say um, then my third one that keeps me organized. I've been trying to use OneNote as like a way to organize files. It's not quite working out yet, but I think I'm like one one tweak away from it being like too, super game changing. But we'll see. I'm always looking for like a really good notes app or or to do list or task app situation. So if you have any tips, I'd take it because I'm on I'm on the OneNote train right now, and we'll see how well that works. Um, I'm gonna plug Charmverse for a minute. I use that really love like, it honestly every day for just like task management. Um, Love it. And we just upgraded our uh, mobile user experience. So you should definitely check it out, see if it works for you. And yeah, it's just great for task management. Like I said, I really do use it daily. It's not just a plug. That's for real. So, That's awesome. I will. Yeah. I will definitely check it out. I'm always desperate for something that will make me like function better. <laughs> well, if you have any questions, reach out to me directly. I'm happy to help. So um so what's next for you what what yeah what are we doing yeah so I'm kicking it in Europe for a moment and then I'll be back on the uh conference train a little bit in the states just kind of bouncing around all the while trying to manage my calendar and workload (laughs) somehow (laughs) like mostly I'm just negating some sleep here so I think at one point I'm just gonna have to schedule a day of rest but I think um, given that Web3 is so decentralized, I think I'm just going to go full nomadic for a while. I think I'm going to give up my apartment. Rent in South Florida is like insanely expensive right now. So I think I'm just going to float around for a while and see what happens. Wow. Well, that's, I mean, that's the beauty of Web3, right? You can work remotely. You yeah. Can, how often do you have to meet with people in person? Well, so here's the fun part about what I'm doing in Scotland at the moment. So I was, I've was i been working on this project in Decentraland. Um, they have like a plaza and they do these like events. And so I've, I've been in touch with them for a while. And one of my phone calls, I like slipped that I was in Spain. And the guy was like, well, how dare you be in Europe and not come to Scotland and meet the team? <laughs> so I popped up here and I think I think uh, I I think we we had a really great meeting and I think we'll be opening up a law firm in the metaverse and <laughs> shortly. So stay tuned. That's that's definitely a hot take right there. Yeah, that's <laughs> but exciting. For those listening, you're you're <laughs> hearing first that there's possibly a, a law firm opening in Decentraland here soon. Oh, so cool. So cool. Yeah. I love it. Oh, very neat. Well we'll keep an eye on how should we best stay on top of on top of this stuff. I always use Learned Chaos on anything with the username that it happens to just be my my established username. I am LC, but I also am the essence of Learned Chaos. So I try to tweet. I think I'm going to try and tweet more and get some like little like one liners out anytime a case comes up that's exciting. I I really want to do like a here's this case and here's like this salient 
two sentences about it and why it matters. Um, we'll see if, you know, the best laid plans, we'll see how well I can stick up with that. But I've learned, I try and do Twitter. I, I definitely am on Instagram. Um, I telegram in groups too. Um, basically anything with a username, I'm learned chaos and I try and engage on as much as possible. Cool. Well, listeners, give give Elsie a follow on Twitter at Learned Chaos. Um, find her on Instagram, doing really cool things that I'm really excited about. Thanks for all your work out there, helping pe- guide people in the Web3 world on their journey and outside of work, all the amazing your work you're doing. Not to mention, we didn't <laughs> even get into your your hobbies and skills that you like to learn, like ukulele <laughs> and archery, but... Um, <laughs> But I love it. And it's been a pleasure talking with you. And I like to end an interview with a light question of describe the rest of your life in five words. I love I love how you think that's a light question. It's that's so like light. such an impending so question. I know. Like, I know. I almost went into an existential crisis <laughs> reading that last one. <laughs> like, I totally would too. I would too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite quotes is, um, what's the point of being alive if you don't at least try to do something remarkable? And I think that really is something I leaned into a lot this last year as I went boldly into that dark night of Web3 chaos, you know, and it's really paid off for me because I think being bold and and following your curiosity is what is remarkable in life, right? We, We find these moments of magic within ourselves of what we can do if we push ourselves and just be courageous and... Um, so I think my new, my new focus, this, this next, the second half of this year going into next year will just be to be more unafraid and tackle, you know, whatever's coming my way with a, with a lack of fear. I just want to be really fearless (laughs) in my approach on life in these next, in this next season, whatever that may bring. Amazing. Well, I wish you all the luck in doing that. You're already kicking ass. So I have no doubt you will (laughs) achieve it. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. It's such, been such a pleasure to get to know you. And I'm so grateful for Charmverse for hosting this Women in Web 3 um, Twitter space. It's great to have male allies. Like Alex was such a delight to meet in New York. And um, yeah, it's just been such a pleasure meeting all these great companies, seeing what they're doing, seeing how they're involving people and, and onboarding others including women into this web three space because it is the wild, wild web three, but we're all here to navigate it and, and see what this beautiful frontier has to offer. Absolutely. I share that sentiment. I'm glad you gave Alex a shout out. He and our other co-founder Matt are fantastic and supportive and answer all of my millions of questions about this world. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, so yeah, check out Charmverse when you get a minute. And then when we're in Bogota together, we'll talk more about it. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> awesome looking forward to it and hey go mint oh everyone go mint your po app miami look Heat. i will say <laughs> look i minted this po app and po app and it is so cute awesome i love it yeah go brilliant mint miami heat lowercase one word on the po app app. i love it yeah i've never i'm like i'm stoked about this one i love this thank you so much of course of course um <laughs> Well, thanks again. Keep crushing it out there. Uh, Listeners, give Elsie a follow. And next week, same time, Thursday at 2 p.m., we'll have Jocelyn Rabancho of Alliance.xyz talking about accelerating the world's transition to Web3. So, Elsie, enjoy the rest of your travels. Be safe. And thank uh, you. I'll be following your journey. Yeah, and I'll see you in Bogota. Absolutely. (laughs) I look forward to it. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much.